Hello everyone. Today I will be sharing the best skunk fur faux coat ever that I made and a make nine update. So if you would like to see and hear all about this project, please continue to watch. Oh. much for stopping by the channel. My name is Talisha and I also go by Creativity by T and today I'm going to be sharing with you this wonderful faux fur coat that I have been so super duper anxious to make since I purchased this faux fur fabric and I used McCall's 8049 to make it. The idea of this coat came about about maybe three summers ago. I saw this fabric in a fabric shop in the LA fabric and fashion district like I said about three years ago but I left it in the store because I had decided to go with another faux fur that I purchased and you know I didn't have like room in my luggage to bring both of them with me so I decided to pick the other one at the time so when I went back to the district about a year later I picked this one up yes <laughs> so yeah it took me over a year to make this and I was actually going to put this make off until December or November of 2023 but due to the encouragement from those who watched my make nine and gave me that little push to go ahead and make a coat now and make the other one later I now have this coat that I think is the bomb dot com <laughs> so thank you to all who commented and gave me that push and encouragement to go ahead and get one made up now and do another and one later not only do i have a new fur coat but i also completed my first make nine project yes it was on my list if you haven't caught on by now to make a faux fur coat. I actually want to make two because I want to use up the two main fur fabrics that were in my stash and taking up a lot of space. So yes, I got that made. And one more thing, I was able to gain space on top. I had to store it on the top of my cubes because it was just so big and fluffy. So Lord knows I need that space. I'm not going to put any more fabric in it. I'm, I'm going to try to sew all this stuff up, but I still like how it just looks less stuffed and cluttered in that space. So yes, a lot of pros came about from making this coat. <laughs> All right, so back to the project of this coat at hand. The pattern again that I use to make this gorgeous coat is McCall's 8049. I was drawn to this pattern because I love the simplicity of the look because I knew that my fur was going to be like super thick and extra, okay? And I love all the views of this pattern. Each view is very, very different. Well, not super, super different, but it's different enough. So you can make each view and still have very different looking coats. This pattern was very easy to make and I will quickly just go over the pattern details and my experience while making it so you can kind of know what I mean by that. So again, this is McCall's 8049 and it's also known as Gina McCall's. The pattern description is Mrs. Jackets. It's not even considered a coat, but clearly if you look at this person that's modeling on the pattern cover, it looks like a coat. So, you know, it is what it is. There are three views to this pattern. View A is a crop jacket or coat with short sleeves. View B has a standard length, but there are pattern pieces designed for color blocking. And view C, which is the view that I made, has the longest length and it is like a basic, more standard design of coat. Again, I made view C and the fabric recommendations are your faux fur, your cuddle fleece, velvets, novelty fabrics, and for your linings, it just says lining fabrics. The sewing skill level on here is set as easy, and it is easy. However, I don't think that it is beginner friendly because of the installation of the elastic casings for the sleeve hems and the actual coat hem and the need for adding a lining. Again, it is easy, but 
there is a difference between easy and beginner friendly which is why you know I said it's not beginner friendly okay so for the notions you will need thread of course you will need two and three eighths yards of half inch elastic for the view that I made and you will also need four fur hook and eyes okay so for the pattern sizing, the pattern sizing comes from size small through extra large and I cut the large which has a finished bust measurement of 45, no 46 and a half. So I was nervous about that because my bust is a 47 inches but I didn't want to make an extra large because there's just a huge difference in the amount of space between the 46 and a half and the extra large which is a 50 and a half and I feel like things that are like 50 and a half busts are just considerably too oversized for me it looks sloppy in my opinion I was also worried that the large would be too small because it's actually a half inch smaller than my bus you know I thought it would be too tight but it's not it's the perfect size and it will still be okay as I continue to lose weight because guess what friends <laughs> I lost 10 pounds <laughs> but yes anyway I think it'll be okay even if as I lose weight because it is like the perfect fit so even if it is just a little bit big it'll be fine so for the pattern pieces I use only three pattern pieces I only have to cut three pattern pieces out for the actual makeup of the coat okay and that was the front the back and the sleeves there were two elastic guides which was for the hem of the coat to insert and also for the hem of the sleeves um, as far as how it looks I do think I achieved the look I do think it looks like the pattern cover the instructions were easy to follow what did I like about this pattern let me tell you I love how the sleeves are I just love how it's kind of like big and poofy more towards the wrists very nice I love the length I love the view options and I love how easy it was for me to make it what um, did I did not like about the pattern I didn't like how the pattern wants you to finish the lining for the sleeves but I don't know if like there's another way possible because I don't line my garments very often I kind of stay away from lining because it's just another step and I just want to get something done quick in a hurry <laughs> but yeah not sure if there's another way however I did do it differently anyway I just did it my own way and I'll tell you how in a second here um but as far as techniques I didn't learn anything new I didn't have any first time experiences so for this fabric if I have not said it already <laughs> I use this beautiful full and soft faux fur that resembles a skunk which is why I call it my skunk coat <laughs> I love this so much and I just yeah it's just so great now I have I picked this up in LA but I have seen something similar to this in Joann's but the reason why I didn't purchase the one in Joann's is because it was more like cream this is white white with the black little spoky things and for the lining I um, used a crepe back satin okay um, I just love crepe back satin. I don't like using regular lining fabrics because they always seem to kind of rip over time at the seam or in the pocket area. So I use crepe back satin because it's stronger and it's heavier. So it also helps with like the drape of a garment. But if you don't like or either want that look of an extra drape and the heaviness, then that's probably not something that you want to use. But that's what I prefer. Um, so yeah that's those are for the fabrics and for the hook and eyes the fur hook and eyes i picked those up at joann's for as far as alterations are concerned yes as mentioned earlier i did not follow the instructions for the sleeve lining which was basically to leave the sleeve free from the lining up here at the armhole and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to fold the lining over the sleeve armhole to cover the raw edges and slip stitch it close but 
what I did was I basted the lining to the sleeve and sewed the whole entire sleeve onto the coat and then I surged to them together and to hide the serge edges I just sewed down some bias tape to cover it up and made it look neat I, I just didn't I, I don't like hand sewing and then I just it felt like like crepe back satin doesn't really iron well like it doesn't leave a crease so I just felt like it would be a tedious job to try to fold it over and keep it folded and you know I just felt like it would have just kept slipping away so in order to save me some time energy and not drive myself nuts this is what I decided to do for my sleep so as far as recommendations I would probably recommend the same as far as like sewing them together and then surging the sleeves and the reason why I say that is because if you don't that, that there would be so much bulkiness in here if you're using this big of a pile of uh, a fur okay it's just, I, I just I don't see how I mean I guess you could trim it down but it's just I recommend that look instead but I would definitely recommend this pattern to others I think it's such a great pattern and even if you live in a climate that doesn't require such a large coat like mine or if you look silly in one like mine because it's just not cold enough you can make the mini version that has the cropped waist and the short sleeves and still look fabulous and I actually looked on Instagram at some of the uh, different sewists that have made this pattern and they've made it in like quilting fabrics and and other things so you don't have to make this in faux fur but this is just you know what the motto has on this is what I wanted to do because this is how I like to dress <laughs> so as far as the availability this pattern has been out for some time I forgot but I'll put it in the screen um, if I can remember I will put that in the screen so you'll know which year it came out but it is not still available at your local Joann's and Hobby Lobby but it is available as a digital pattern on the something delightful website and it is currently on sale for $4.99 today that I am recording this is a Friday night so if you like this pattern you still have an opportunity to get it and you can have it printed if you don't want to do the printing and the taping that I totally just despise <laughs> so now I will enter a few more pictures and twirls of me in my coat So yes, 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 yes. I love this coat. I'm so happy that I got it made now and that I didn't wait because I have another fur coat that I want to make and dealing with this fur is a challenge, okay? Even though I, you get all these pros, it, the dealing with this fur is a challenge. It's, it's very thick. It flies all over the place but with that being said stay tuned to the channel because I will be posting a little short on that topic in the next couple of days that you know you definitely will want to hear even if you don't plan on sewing with fur if it comes about or if you just want to know what my experience was you want to hear that so yes I love this and I hope you like it too so please let me know what your thoughts are about this coat and this pattern and how you think it looks in the comment section below as you know I would always love to hear your thoughts I know that this is this coat is a lot okay and it is extra and it may not be everyone's cup of tea but baby it's me <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I am getting ready to close out this video but before you leave please take a pause for the cause and click the like button and the subscribe button and the gray notification bell so that you can be notified of future videos thank you to all of my new and returning subscribers for your support and I will see you in the next one bye <laughs>